Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Major Ross Sanders. We'll see an American Catholic hero video and much more. Welcome to Life on the Rock. Tonight our guest is Ross Sanders. He's a helicopter pilot in the Marine Corps and he survived a helicopter crash. They're very deadly. They had 25 people on this big helicopter, crashed, they all made it out alive. And he attributes St. Joseph's intercession at saving their lives. Yeah, it's a story you don't want to miss and it's very remarkable. And it's really a story too of gratitude, I think from his perspective as well. And we're now going to an American Catholic hero video. With the great desire to serve both God and country, we find in the life of Father Charles Joseph Waters, selfless devotion to comrades. It was during the Vietnam era that he was commissioned in 1966 to serve under the 173rd Airborne Brigade. It was during his first tour uh, as a chaplain. In fact, he actually made his first jump on February 22nd uh, on an operation known as uh, Operation Junction City. It was there on the front lines that he served those that he was called to serve by administering the last rites, hearing their confessions, praying with them, um, and also distributing food and water, and also bandaging those who were wounded. And after this, after his first tour, he was actually awarded the Air Medal and the Bronze Star. But he also asked to be uh, a volunteer for an extension of six months. And it was during his second tour that he was in a battle known as the Battle of Dak II, which took place on Hill, a fortified hill known as Hill 875. And this battle was one uh, where there were high friendly fire casualties and there were a lot of mortar strikes going on as well. But during whenever there was heavy, heavy fire, there was an area basically known as no man's land and Father Waters had repeatedly gone out there retrieving wounded soldiers and bringing them back. On one of his last trips, he had gone out there and retrieving a, one of the wounded soldiers when he was killed in action. But it was his act of valor, his heroism, that he was a recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor in 1969. So we honor the life and the virtues of Father Charles Waters. Ross, welcome to Life on the Rock. Thank you. And this is your first appearance on the show? That's right. And you're actually a, a native a local here to Birmingham. Uh, what part of Birmingham are you from? I'm from Homewood. Homewood. And you went to? I went Ar to uh, Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Church uh, here in, in Homewood. And then I went to uh, John Carroll Catholic High School as well. Nice. Now, you're also a Marine pilot. And so we'll be talking a little bit about aviation and all that. And, um, mm -hmm. But also with your story, you've also survived a miraculous ca uh, crash that we'll get to uh, a little bit later. And, um, but I wanted to ask you, what actually inspired you to become a, a pilot in the, be in the beginning? Well, in, in the beginning, I would say uh, service. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when I was younger, I was introduced to, um, or I knew about the Marine Corps from family members that mm -hmm. had served, and it had always appealed to me. Yeah. And um, as I got older and was trying to you know, find my way through the yeah. world, so to speak, <laughs> Uh, I, I, would, would, I guess what struck me was the, the service aspect of it, yeah. uh, the sacrifice aspect of yeah. it. And um, it, never, it never left me. And of course, after 9-11 happened, it just yeah. seemed to be stronger, so. And that's a calling to, you know, really give yourself in service and the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the fact that you brought up 9-11, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot of men really responded that they had that sense of duty of patriotism to go out and serve their country. And um, now you're a pilot as well. 
And uh, so tell us some of the, maybe what you've been flying here lately. Well, I, I started out as an AH-1 uh, Whiskey Super Cobra okay. pilot. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's an attack helicopter. Um, and then that was when I was in North Carolina. From there, uh, I was selected to fly at HMX-1. That's the squadron that, that flies the President. Uh, Marine One. Okay. Uh, so I flew the VH3 Sea King and the VH60 White Hawk when I was there. Um, and then after that, I, uh, I'm, I got orders to my current station now, which is uh, Joint Base Andrews flying the UC35. So you're out in Maryland right now. That's and, right. Um, but you're also flying jets? That's right. It's a yeah. jet. It's a, it's a business jet. Yeah, okay. A business jet. And uh, so is the transition difficult to go from flying a helicopter to a jet? Well, uh, I would say, you know, in, in Naval Flight School, mm -hmm. you you actually start out on a on a fixed wing aircraft, learning the the principles yeah. of aviation, and it's from that from that first aircraft you then branch out to you know either multi engine or helicopter or tilt rotor or jets or whatever, and to a more advanced school. Um, I went the helicopter route, but I had the I had the foundations there already. So okay. you know. Not really. I had to sort of change some habit patterns yeah. and start doing some rules with, you know, you fly higher, so the, the, the rules are a little bit different. Yeah. But, um, and there's a learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it's nothing that, that can't be, you know, yeah. overcome with, with study and, and, and a little bit of training. So. Yeah, so you've been flying all kinds of different aircraft. And, um, now, is that something you kind of put in a request, or is that something just a new assignment given to you? No, I... I requested it when I when I went to the um, the officer selection officer uh -huh. uh, to to apply to the Marine Corps. At the time, they weren't taking ground contracts yeah. to be a ground officer. They only wanted air contracts, and um, I hadn't really contemplated flying oh. at that at that point. Yeah. I just wanted I knew I wanted to serve and go in the Marine yeah. Corps. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I kind of figured I would figure that out as time went on, and um, well. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take the test. And uh, I, I struggled with the first, I think you could take it three times. I, str I failed it at first. Okay. <laughs> uh, went back, you know, got, uh, got in the books a little more yeah. and, then, and, then, and then passed it and, and got my air contract. Yeah. And, and once I had the air contract, what that meant was is I would go through my, my training, you know, once I completed OCS and then the follow on training at TBS, then I, I, had, uh, I had an opportunity to go to flight school. And it was all on me at that point if I, you know, as long as I as I prepared myself and passed passed my flights, I, I could I could get, get, earn my wings. Yeah. Um, but I could, I could still fail out. You know, oh. it, even even going through flight school. Yeah. Um, but so that's that's kind of how I got yeah. involved. Those are pretty rigorous. I always just yeah. think that'd be a very difficult uh, kind of occupation to pursue. And yeah. I've always kind of wondered, like in terms of just flying planes and jets, uh, what what do you what have you found more difficult? Well, I, I think they're. I think they're both. They're. They're kind of. They have their own difficulties. Yeah. You know, they, someone. Uh, people ask me a lot. Uh, which one do you prefer? And I don't. Yeah. I don't know that I necessarily prefer one over the other. Okay. They're. they're uh, you know, the jet's obviously faster, and you fly a lot yeah. higher. Um, and you can go further. Yeah. And, and that's that has its own unique um, specialness about it. But, but helicopters, uh, you're you're lower to the ground, lower to the earth, and you 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 have sort of a uh, seeing the trees and whatever's yeah. below you, you know, moving, you, you, you sort of feel like you're flying more. It's it's a different feel. It's a different feel. Yeah, it's a different feel. Um, you know, you're, you're eye level with birds sometimes. Right, yeah. So, so uh, it's, they're both unique. They're both different. They're both enjoyable. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think flying helicopters involves a little bit more uh, using your 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 hands and your and your yeah. legs, your feet, um, and then and then flying jets. You know, you. It's a little more fast paced. Yeah. So, so just different, different training, uh, different, slightly different skill sets, but the same principles yeah. undergo, undergo both. And as a pilot, you also have to train for crashes. Mm -hmm. um, but can you talk to you a little bit about the training involved with a helicopter crash? Sure. Um, so, but when you go through uh, your training there mm -hmm. in, in Pensacola Off Naval Flight School, uh, you're, you're prepared. They, yeah. they make sure you're, you're ready for anything that comes your way that might happen. Um, mitigating all sorts of risk, and one of them is is uh, the helo dunker. That's probably the one that most people sort of dread when they're going through. It's uh, um, they have giant pools there and, yeah. and, and a fuselage of an aircraft, and um, you'll go through what they call a sweat chair first, where they they flip the chair upside down, and wow. and you practice 
um, getting getting the seatbelt off and then and then getting out. Uh, but you'll then once you do that, you'll go to the, the actual dunker itself and do it. And you gotta do you have to do five five rides in, in the dunker, and then um, and then from there you're able to go to you know the airplane and actually start training. It used to be a T34. Now it's a T6 that they train in. Oh, okay. Um, we have to go to a break, but whenever we come back, let's talk about the crash you were involved in. All right. All right. Sounds good. So Ross, you were involved in a miraculous uh, helicopter crash, and uh, can you actually just kind of tell us kind of when and where that happened? Sure. It was um, in 2014. I was deployed on the uh, 22nd Mew, and um, we were uh, off the coast of Djibouti in mm -hmm. Africa. It's in the Gulf of Aden, uh, areas known as the Horn of Africa. Yeah. And um, anyways, I was flying from uh, the shore back to the ship. Uh, the USS Mesa Verde, and um, anyways, we were on a CH-53 Super, uh, Super Stallion helicopter, mm -hmm. and uh, we were flying for about an hour when um, I noticed that the engine was, uh, one of the engines was starting to fail mm. looking out of the, the back of the aircraft. I could see smoke and, and yeah. sparks. Um, anyways, I, we were, I knew we were setting up to land just because I know the, the pattern for, for landing on the ship. And um, I have a habit of always getting a reference point oh. when, when I, if I'm riding in the back of a helicopter. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I, w I was riding uh, in the back on the left-hand side, and, or I'm, I'm sorry, on the right-hand side, and um, the, the back opened up to my left, so I got a, le I got a reference point on my left-hand side. That's just one of the first things they, they teach you is, is to get a reference point because when the helicopter, if it crashes in the water, the center of gravity is so high on, on it that it will it'll flip upside down. Yeah, and um, that reference point keeps you oriented wow. when, when that happens okay. because it is very disorienting. Yeah, um, and in you know previous mishaps, uh, they they had noted that you know a lot of people didn't get out because they didn't know which way was up, down, left, right. So having that having that uh, reference point really helps keep you oriented and and, and kind of is the first step in the plan for for mitigating yeah. the risk there. So when you begin to notice that the engine was beginning to fail, was it like just smoke and sparks or? It was, yeah, it was tons of sparks yeah. and tons of smoke and you could kind of hear the engine surging. Um, and going through your mind, do you know how much time or is it just a no, matter of seconds? You don't, you don't. Or, that's, the one, that's the one difference from the training. You know, in the training, you kind of know when it's gonna happen. Yeah. You can get your breath um, before you go in. But in that situation, you didn't, I wasn't totally, totally aware that it was going to fail. I yeah. sort of, you know, sort of suspect it's going to fail. You got to be expected for the <clears throat> unexpected, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, um, yeah, seeing, seeing the smoke and, and the, and the sparks, I started saying the Hail Mary mm -hmm. at the rapid rate. Yeah. Um, so I was just going to ask, like, whenever you began to realize that, I mean, what goes through your mind? I mean, I know it's, you're dealing with seconds, right. You know, that may seem like, just an eternity at one. And, yeah, and it did. It, well, I, I, I looked back to see if, I didn't know if I was the only one that saw yeah. what, what I was seeing, because it's loud. Yeah. You know, the, the ramp was open, um, and you could see clear to, you could okay. see the ocean, I could see the water. So the back was open. Yeah. Oh, okay. It has a ramp, and, yeah. and that's, just kind of, that's kind of the standard uh, operating procedure yeah. um, going back to the ship uh, for, you know, for this reason, yeah. is have that, have that ramp open. Um, and so I could look out and see the water in addition to the, the sparks that were coming off the back of that engine. Yeah. And, um, but I wasn't sure if I was the only one that was seeing what I was seeing. Or, and I wasn't even sure if the engine was failing, to be honest. I yeah. just knew something was wrong. Yeah. And I was sort of bracing myself for, you know, what yeah. might happen or not happen at all. Who knows? So you weren't flying. You were just I wasn't flying. <laughs> I was in the back. That is right. I was in, yeah. I was in the back. And with the crash, did the helicopter like hit the side, or the, or did it just go in the water? No, it yeah. So it lost. I probably first started seeing the sparks mm -hmm. at around between 200 and 100 feet, yeah. and then it lost the engine at about 50 feet oh. as it approached the deck of the ship, which was at the deck of the ship's at 35 feet. Okay. Um, 
and we, we hit the back of the ship. We hit the, the corner. Oh, okay. um, hit the corner, and as soon as it hit the corner, it, it went right in on its side. Yeah. And then it rolled upside down. Because I always think, like, with a helicopter crash, it, it goes out of, it just starts spinning. Yeah. Uh, you know. If it loses the tow rotor. I'm okay. Talking about. Yeah. Right, because the tow rotor counteracts the torque of okay. the main rotor. So that, so what actually happened is the, when we hit the ship, the tow rotor struck the water mm. um, at about the same time. Yeah. And um, it, it did, it did, the motion's called yaw. It did yeah. yaw to the right be, because of that a little bit. But yeah, um, but yeah it rolled upside down and, um, and then all the gear that was inside oh, man. fell on my side. So. Wow. <laughs> So you got to watch the water and the gear coming your way and all that? That's right. Well, yeah. Well, I don't really remember the, yeah. I don't really remember the water. I remember feeling the water. Okay. The, the water, the windows were burst out. So yeah. it just sort of, you know, instantaneously sort of filled up around me. I stayed in my seat. That's the other part of, of the, the preparing for the yeah. emergency is you're supposed to stay in your seat. And how, how jarring was it when the helicopter collided with it, the ship or just? It was, uh, it felt like. Three hard, three hard hits. You mm. know, sort of like being hit in football. Yeah. I guess three, three of those real hard, and then, and then it was just like being snatched completely backwards. Yeah. So when when you when I was sitting, you know, you're not sitting fore and aft, you're you're sitting uh, sort of athwart the direction of travel. So you're on the seats are on the side. Yeah. So when it went on its side, I was on my back yeah. when it impacted. And how many men were involved? Twenty five. Twenty five. And they were all, they all survived and they were they all, all rescued. They all survived. And what role did St. Joseph uh, play in just the miracle? You, you attribute a lot to St. Joseph. Right, I do. I do attribute to St. Joseph. Um, uh, I, you know, I, everything, everything from, from the training and the preparation that mm -hmm. went into it to the actual moment itself. Yeah. I, 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 had a, I have always had a devotion to St. Joseph. Um, my family uh, has a strong Sicilian tradition. And, and we celebrate the St. Joseph altar yeah. every March 19th. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, so I grew up with this prayer, it's an ancient prayer that's supposed to have come from the first century AD. And it, some of the blessings that come from the devotion of this prayer is that you, know, it, it, you won't drown wow. if you have that devotion. And, um, and my mother had given me that yeah. prayer. And so I kept a copy of it with me. Yeah. Uh, I had several bags that in the, during the crash, some were lost, some were fished out of the ocean. Yeah. And when I got that, when I got one of the bags back, my prayer book was in there. And the salt water had sort of cemented the pages together. Mm. But when I opened the prayer book, it opened to that St. Joseph prayer. Wow. So. How would you describe your faith life kind of before and after the accident? Well, I definitely felt grateful to St. Joseph. Mm -hmm. And um, I've made a stronger effort at trying to... Um, increase that devotion yeah you know I um, we my wife and I uh, Megan we had our uh, first St. Joseph altar mm. um, after that um, my sixth child um, I named uh, uh, Luke Joseph oh. after St. Joseph yeah. um, I also married I also uh, named one of my children Mary um, because I was saying the Hail Mary during, yeah. that, during <laughs> that event wow. um, so yeah it's just it's increased my faith and devotion to St. Joseph. I did the consecration of St. Joseph yeah. last year. Oh, yeah. The new book that came mm -hmm. out, the 33 day, yeah. which is just fantastic for, you know, I think anybody that's trying to be a, a good husband and father, um, it's just a, it's a complete antidote. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's in that book uh, for that devotion. So it, it definitely, it definitely increased um, my gratitude and, and my devotion. Yeah. That's, so. that's amazing. You know, and St. Joseph, he was, he was definitely a man of service, you know, in a service to God and, his love for the Holy Family, uh, protecting Mary mm -hmm. and, and Jesus, and you know he he had to face a lot of enormous, I think, difficulties and uh, temptations, and just kind of overcoming a lot of fear. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I think of whenever you're ever involved in a car, you know, any accident, any so especially the helicopter. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fear, you know, and it, it psychologically it can just kind of mess with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think you know just to have that that guide, you know, and that strength, you know, and that, you know, that man of faith and virtue that, you know, that will say well, everything will be okay. Yes, sir. You know, and so I think that's a real powerful and just the fact that the church is here in the past year, you know, with the year of St. Joseph and everything, and just to bring that witness 
you know, to to lives of so many that maybe don't know who he is. So, yeah, absolutely, and and that's something I, I dealt with after the crash. You yeah. know, was was you know easing back into the cockpit. You yeah. Know, again, yeah. Um, you know, and, and really thinking, well, you know, I've got to provide for my family. This is my this is my duty. This is what I'm supposed to yeah. do. Um, and thinking about St. Joseph yeah. definitely helped put that in perspective. Yeah, and it's you know you, it's those sacrifices you know that that are difficult you know because you put your life out on the line and uh, you know but there's you know we also have that sense of justice mm-hmm. that you know it's not about ourselves but it's about that service and call to serve to other people. So yep. Ross, well thank you for being on Life yes, on the thank Rock you. and sharing your story and I'll have to keep praying more to St. Joseph. So. Yeah. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Well, that was a great story. Great story. I think it's testimony to how powerful St. Joseph's uh, intercession is for us. On that prayer card, it says, you know, protection from drowning and fire. And and then when he opened the book, he said, you know, it was stuck together with the Mm -hmm. salt water and stuff. It opened right to that page. I think it's a sign saying yeah. St. Joseph interceded for you. Yeah. And it struck me too that you had a good question about how did your devotion change before or after prayer life change? And you started doing more with St. Joseph. So I, I like the fact too that maybe, I don't know how often he said the prayer, but you know, St. Joseph was there. Yeah. Sometimes we have to think, oh, we got to get it just right. Yeah. He didn't make the consecration to yeah. laughter. You know? <laughs> no. no, I think there's a lot to be said there, just in the sense, too, that, you know, in heaven we have saints and angels that watch over us. We have patron saints. And he did share that his family had, you know, a devotion to St. Joseph, and St. Joseph has always been part of his life, you know. And sometimes maybe the accident was just to nudge him, to, hey, wake up and, you know, pray to me more, you know, because St. Joseph, he's... He's, a, he's the patron saint of the Universal Church. You know, he's looking down over us. You know, and it is a miracle that all 25 men survived that crash. You know, and I was just kind of think, you know, you were mentioning the drowning. You know, in a plane, that's just going to suck you under, you know. And, uh, you know, and you look at the survival odds and rates, you know, and it's like, well, what, you know, what chance? When you're fighting just for seconds, you know, and you have to make right. these decisions in just a, such a disoriented environment, you know, you're re- really relying on a re- lot of grace at that point. Yeah, you know? he said those crashes are very deadly. Yeah. They're jarring, yeah. And mm-hmm. he was just talking about the blows. It's like receiving just three massive blows to the body, you know. And, uh, you know, and if you've ever been kind of in a car accident or something, you can kind of relate to some of that, you know, and just the fear alone of what's going on. So St. Joseph, no, he's a very powerful intercessor. And I think, you know, just not to neglect you know, our, you know, praying to the saints, because that is a very important part I of like our Catholic I like, too, life. what he said about a reference point. Yeah. I presume it was in the helicopter itself, but because it, he said it's top heavy, mm-hmm. it immediately spins over, you're underwater, yeah. there's chaos, there's stuff floating in the water around yeah. you and all this. And, but if you find like a reference point of how to get out or what orientation's up or down, it can help you. And for a Christian, our reference point is Jesus Christ mm-hmm. in all things. If we're confused about what to do, right, we look towards Christ, what he taught, his example, his witness, a life of service, mm-hmm. of sacrifice, of prayer to the Father. Uh, he is the reference point for us as Christians. So we send you out into that vineyard with a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine his face upon you. May he give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. Stop.
See you.